All right, well, it's April and we've got some new Google Assistant features to talk about, as well as we're gonna do a couple of deep dives on some features that have now finally rolled out, including the automated news option, new clock faces, and we'll take you through the newest Google Assistant display, the Nest Hub second generation, and how you can use it for sleep tracking and other new features. Before we dive into those features and products, two things. First, any feature you see demoed here on this video is using the US English version of the Google Assistant. If you live outside of the United States or you live in the US, but you do not use the US English version of the Google Assistant, some of the features you may see in this video, they might not have rolled out to you just yet. Second, special thanks to this video's sponsor, PDF Element by Wondershare. With this software, you can do things like underline, highlight, generally mark up a document, create a signature. You can also do some pretty cool stuff like take a scanned PDF that wasn't originally editable, set your language, and boom, you can now select and edit text from that PDF. With PDF Element, converting a PDF to another file is a breeze, and you can do it in batches. And the program makes it easy to work with and create interactive PDFs with checkboxes and dropdowns, and you also have the ability through the software to extract data from multiple PDF forms into a single CSV file, which is pretty convenient. Wondershare also has a good amount of tutorials for their software available on YouTube. PDF Element can be downloaded for free on Mac, Windows, Android, and iOS. You can use the link below to save up to 50% off on PDF Element Desktop. All right, first up, let's talk about some big new features for Google Assistant devices. And these of course come with the new Nest Hub second generation, which just hit store shelves here in the US this week. With the new Nest Hub, Google added in a piece of hardware we've seen before on the Pixel 4 XL and the Pixel 4, the Soli radar chip. Soli allows you to do a few new things on the second generation Nest Hub. It allows you to play and pause content by tapping the air in front of the display, perfect for times in the kitchen when you have your hands full and don't want to have to worry about touching the display. The Soli Radar allows the Nest Hub second generation to do sleep tracking, which is kind of insane when you think about it because the predominant way most of us around the globe have been doing sleep tracking with consumer devices is by using one of these a wearable on our wrist. And there are some inherent downsides to tracking your sleep with a wearable. Uh, one, you always gotta make sure that this thing is charged. And the predominant way most of us still charge things is overnight. So when you're trying to track your sleep, you can't actually charge this device. So you have to charge it like when you're in the shower in the morning or at some other time. And then that will often lead to either you completely forget to charge it entirely or the battery's running low and it runs out on you while it's tracking your sleep. So you get an incomplete picture at how you may have slept on a certain night. The Nest Hub is always plugged in and uses the Soli radar to analyze how the person closest to the display is sleeping based on their breathing and movements, all without a camera or wearable. Sleep Sense, which is the new name for this feature, can also detect some sleep disturbances like coughing and snoring or light and temperature changes in the room with the Nest Hub's mics and ambient light color temperature sensors. It uses all of this data to help you understand what's impacting your sleep and overall how well you're sleeping. And all of this data also, of course, has implications for the Google Assistant. You can ask it things like, how did I sleep? It looks like you slept a good amount and it was fairly restful. You woke up a little early, but slept for seven hours and 43 minutes. Did I cough last night? It looks like you didn't cough at all. What about snoring? It looks like you snored for a total of 21 minutes. With the data from the sleep sensors, the assistant will also provide you with suggestions on how you can sleep better and create tailored bedtime schedules. There's also a new wellness setting that you can find in your assistant settings on a mobile device by opening the Google Assistant on your phone tapping the icon at the top right, and then scrolling down until you find wellness. The wellness setting is in connection with the new sleep features and likely down the road, the new wearables Google will launch now that it has completed the Fitbit acquisition. 
If you'd like to track your sleep on your phone, you can do this by downloading the Google Fit app as well. The wellness settings allows you to opt in to your assistant proactively showing your information on your displays and devices that include things like exercise, nutrition, sleep, and overall wellness data. Even if you don't enable the sleep sense on the new Nest Hub, Google has made some additional changes to the display so it'll dim at night to make your bedroom more sleep friendly, and the Your Evening page helps wind you down at night with relaxing sounds. When it's time to wake up, the Nest Hub sunrise alarm will gradually brighten the display and increase the alarm volume. If you want to sleep a bit more, you can even use motion sense to wave your hand and snooze the alarm. Now, we'll have much more on the Nest Hub second generation here on the channel, as well as we'll do a dedicated video to reviewing its sleep tracking functionality, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you want to see that video. Now, another feature I want to talk about with Google Assistant displays are some new clock faces that recently rolled out. Timeless is an analog clock with circular indicators at 12, 3, 6, and 9. It also comes in a dark variant as well. There's also now a weather clock face, which will look familiar to Lenovo alarm clock owners. This clock face shows the time in front and it'll display the current weather condition in a visual form in the background. So when it's raining, you'll see rain. When it's clear at night, you'll see stars, etc. To change your ambient mode display options, swipe up from the bottom of the Google Assistant display, select photo frame, and then select full screen clock for the new clock faces. You can also just ask Google to set the photo frame as well. All right, the last feature I want to dive into a bit more is the automated news feature. Now, when the Google Assistant first came out, you could play news on it, but it was a news summary, and these were little mini news snippets from different outlets that you could choose and then reorder in a playlist. But a few months back, the company rolled out an additional option. To see it, let's go into news settings by opening up the Google Assistant on either an iPhone or Android device. Once you have the Assistant open, click on your profile at the top right hand corner, then scroll down until you see news, tap that and scroll down to the bottom of the page that appears. Tap the blue button that says change news playlist format, then select the your news update. The your news update allows Google to automatically curate your news playlists every day based on the sources and topics Google knows you're interested in from searches as well as what you read through Google news if you use that service. What the assistant is doing here is two things. Some of the news sources are short form podcasts released by the sources themselves, while other news that Google plays, like from The Verge or 9to5Google in my case, are actually news articles that the Google Assistant is reading out loud, which is technology that Google released earlier last year where you can take pretty much any article on an Android device and ask the Assistant to read this. One of the major benefits I found with using the Your News update is discovery. When I switched over to this automated news playlist summary, I noticed immediately that it started pulling in local news stories from local outlets here in the Raleigh area. Now, it didn't pull in stories from all of the outlets, but a majority of them. And I was actually quite surprised and quite thrilled that it did that because I consider this to be a big win. Here in the US, a lot of the times our news is just so national. It's either about like national stories or national politics. And I don't know about you, but local news and local issues can have just as big, if not a bigger impact on your day-to-day -day life. So I didn't even realize a lot of these outlets made content for smart speakers or that you could play in a podcast form on your smartphone, but I'm really glad that Google picks up on it and puts these stories into the Your News update. Now, this feature doesn't work perfectly, and I think Google did something recently that broke the news briefing feature because when you click Add Shows in the news settings, it doesn't show you any news sources like from NPR or the BBC, which are news sources you can play from when asking the assistant directly and were previously sources I could add into my own news summary. So I'm not sure what's going on there. All right, one last quick assistant feature to mention is that Paramount Plus launched about a month ago or so, and you can link your Paramount account to the Google Assistant. You can do this by going to the videos and photos sections in your assistant settings, and then ask the assistant on an assistant display to play a Paramount Plus show like Picard or SpongeBob for the kids, and boom, it just works. If you have a Chromecast, you can also ask Google to play SpongeBob on the TV, and it'll start playing it on your TV. 
All right, well, that's it for the assistant updates this month. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. And if you did and liked it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button below. And we're anticipating more news and more features being announced by Google as we go into May when they typically do their Google I.O. event. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all of the latest news for Google Assistant devices and all of the feature updates for them as well. Well, that's gonna do it for me. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.